Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, this is REZ 2022-24 Terramore Development off of Highway 122 and Skipper Bridge. The request is approximately three acres to be rezoned from its current EA Estate Agricultural to CC Crossroads Commercial. Uh, per the letter of intent, again, this is for a general retail store, more commonly known as a Dollar General. Uh, the property does sit on Highway 122, which is a state-maintained minor arterial, approximate traffic count of 5,000 cars a day, and Skipper Bridge Road, which has a traffic count a little over 1,000 going southbound and a little under 1,000 going northbound. Um, you'll notice here that the character map shows an agricultural area. Commercial zoning is allowed where appropriate in these cases, especially along crossroads. We've seen several other cases throughout the years uh, where it has been done. There are no wetlands per the Valor GIS, however the site plan submitted by the uh, applicant does show wetlands and that would be, have to be uh, dealt with during the engineering site phase. This is that rough site plan with one access, again three acres on the northwest side of Skipper Bridge and Georgia Highway 122, approximately a 10,000 square foot building, and again buffering between EA and CC zoning is a minimum of 30 feet. So. Uh, those things would be addressed if approved during construction um, plan review phase. Here's another rendering of the store submitted by the applicant. So yeah, I thought this was going to be a market, Dollar General Market, no? I, I was not told that in the letter. The applicant, I believe, is here and maybe can answer that question better right. for you. But it is within a rural service area and agricultural forestry character area. Uh, so staff finds the request consistent with the comprehensive plan and recommends approval. Teddy, I know that it's new traffic studies, or you are getting traffic studies, but I'm just curious, is it just because of the wetlands or whatever that this the won't have a bridge better than a 122? That is the applicant submitted the site plan. We've seen the alternative uh, layout for this property. So, again, it's up to them. You have seen it? We did see one in a pre-application meeting several months ago. Okay. Uh, but again, this is this is one they seem to have packed in. But it is not mine. Close to CH or CC, back towards a higher would be the next closest. You also have um, property to the east, nice and circle, as a commercial uh, zoning from 2012. And then farther east than that, Walker's Crossing, commercial zoning, uh, again, CC, CG out that way. Uh, a higher does have more or less commercial highway and commercial crossroads, commercial general zoning uh, within its city limits, uh, where the exact eastern boundaries of those are, Mr. Martin might be able to tell you. But Again, CC zoning is, is allowed where appropriate, especially here at the crossroads, um, and that's why we recommend approval of it. Okay. All right. Is there anyone here to not wish to speak on behalf of this request? If you'll come forward, please. Subdivided out of a much larger tract 
it's a uh, wooded acreage right now. Um, the property to the north and to the west is, is heavily wooded. So, you know, even though that won't be on the developed property, I believe that will remain. Um, sorry, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, the audience is having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. Uh, is the volume all the way up? Okay. So, so what about the, the site plan? There was mention of maybe moving the drive. So the site plan is still, I mean, it is a conceptual plan, and it's still, uh, it's in the works. You know? I mean, there are some uh, issues that have to be worked through with uh, Georgia DOT on access with Georgia Highway 122. Uh, Max Schoenauer, uh, with Tidewater Engineering, is here, and I've been having to get up here and speak more to access and site plan issues, but yeah, that is not etched in stone just yet as to where that access point will be. Uh, there is potential it could be off Skipper Bridge, but you know, at this point, this is what the applicant would like to do. Of course, GDOT is going to have some say in that as well. So, um, you know, there there are some facade upgrades in the in the conceptual the rendering that was given. Thank you. Uh, there is some brick on the facade and uh, the higher facade on the front. And there could potentially be you know, other facade upgrades. Um, you know, we've done some gooseneck lighting and things like that uh, on the facade where we dress it up a little bit. So, um, you know, we're sensitive, and I think the applicant is sensitive that it's a rural area and they want to make the building and the site you know, consistent with, with the area and uh, keep it in a, in a rural nature. So, um, staff has uh, approved this and recommended CC zoning, and we ask that you follow the staff's recommendation and approve this for CC. And I'm here to answer any other questions y'all may have, and I can bring, certainly bring Pete up to answer some engineering questions about access or layout if you have more specific questions. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yourself. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Peter Schoenhauer with Tide Water Engineering, a 200 communication case, St. Simon's Island, Georgia. Um, what I can tell you about access uh, in, the, in this exact site plan is, again, it is conceptual. We, uh, we're still in the early stages of the process, obviously. We're here asking the, the first stage passing for rezone. So we don't have all the engineering taken care of. Um, we do know, you know, when we're this far along, we have had discussions, we are having ongoing discussions with GI on access right now. So this is one, this is probably the preferred site plan layout, um, but I can't tell you that we're, we're ready to commit to this because we're not done going back and forth with GDOT right now. So it could really be a combination of, of uh, two driveways, one on the Skip Bridge, one on the, on the State Route. Um, it could potentially be one on the State Bridge, and nothing on the State Route. So correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there an electrical, uh, like a Georgia Power um, access nope. through there in the slot? That's not correct. I, I, yeah. I thought so. So you would be, I think it runs right across parallel with 122, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. It does, okay. I mean, I'll let that question go through you, too. Uh -huh, I am. So I, I'm just curious, too, and I, I know staff that has recommended approval, and of course, Mr. Nyland said the same thing, and, uh, but, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we're talking about the traffic that goes by there today, you know, 5,000 go east, west, 1,500 go north, south. I know we have some objections to some of the neighbors talking about some accidents that occur there frequently. I, I don't have those numbers in front of me. But just going forward to be a good neighbor, uh, is it possible to have all this traffic laid out on Skipper Bridge and go from there? Is it, is it possible to have one driveway access off Skipper Bridge? Or you get in and out of Skipper Bridge right now? I would say it's possible, but I, I couldn't commit to that right now. Yes, sir. But it's something that we're looking at. Any other questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
We've got time for one more speaker if there's anyone else who wishes to speak on behalf of this request. We'll, we'll yield our time. All right. Thank that. you very much. <clears throat> All right. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak against this request? <laughs> I tell you what, since there's so many, y'all just line up um, if you would, please. And we're going to have some leeway on the time, but because there are so many, I'll just tell y'all the beginning. Some of y'all may get cut off. I mean, we are, we're going to give you at least 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to cut somebody off in the middle, but I don't want you to be really long-winded. And this is where that part where I said don't repeat what somebody else has already said, this will save your time if you'll follow that. All right, please go ahead. My name is Gretchen Portman. I live at 6565 Portman Road. Um, I live approximately 2.4 miles from this location. Um, within, uh, at Walker's Crossing, that is 5.3 miles from my house, there is a Dollar General there. Um, 6.8 miles from my house is a higher. There is a Dollar General there. 5.6 miles from my road on Davidson Road house. Uh, Davidson Road, there is a Dollar General there. Seven miles from my house on Dumas Road, there is a Dollar General there. I do not need a Dollar General within 2.4 miles of my house. This is very close to where we just had some one acre rezoning of a Valdell and um, the, the little circle over there. And people out there now think that they're living out uh, in town, and so they have to have Dollar Generals near them. I certainly hope not. Uh, we do not need a Dollar General. And while it may be appropriate to have commercial zoning at Crossroads, like there is a Cat Creek where the little restaurant used to be, we don't need to have new commercial zoning in our area. And I know also about the traffic accidents. There in Belleville, you see them all the time. Horrible wrecks. Horrible, horrible wrecks. So, no, absolutely not. My name is Becky Brown, Sherry Harris. Um, I live at 57, 22 Griffin Drive. Um, I co own some property right there across with my mother. We can tell her to not be here tonight, but she did send a letter in um, going around here. Um, so, I'm, I'm speaking on her behalf as well. My mom owns a property across from this area. I live across the street and my son is building there as well. This store would be right in his backyard. This property has been my dad's family for a very long time. I grew up there when Skipper Bridge Road was still a dirt road and State Road Bridge was out. The only grocery store closed was 5S Grocery and high. And we were kind of out. Development came along and paved Skipper Bridge Road and years later repaired the bridge. Sure, it's convenient, but we were fine without it. It added more traffic, higher speeds, and more accidents. Over the years, you know, we added to our property and my cousins next to us fences and cameras to keep all the trespassers off. We didn't have to do that before all the development brought it to us. We have no interest in adding convenience to our peaceful rural community. We appreciate the trees, the wildlife, and the privacy, and I don't think you'll find any landowners, landowners that want this. If you've ever driven through this area, <coughs> you have seen my daddy chip this hat at you in the lungs. Well, my daddy passed away two months ago, and he's rolling over into the grave right now with all the commercial business across the street from his family and his family land. Skipper Bridge Road. I just wanted to throw out a few facts about the agriculture in our community in Lowndes <coughs> County. According to 2017 Census of Agriculture that's put out by the USDA every five years, Lowndes County has approximately 380 farms that compromise 61,000 acres of land. Of those, 80% are small to medium farms, and their revenue alone is responsible for $28 million of $35 million in revenue. <clears throat> I think this compromises many small farms that contribute significantly to our local economy. If the rumors are to be believed, well, there is a dollar general that y'all are speaking of, we have to also think about that there's probably going to be roads that are going to need to be expanded. There's no way that you're going to be able to accommodate that type of traffic in that area. It's basically you're dropping a dollar general in the middle of nowhere. 
Well, guess who's going to have to end up paying that? Is us taxpayers that live in that area. That's who's going to do it. You're not going to charge the businesses for it. And also, I'd like to discuss the impact of the rezoning on the river itself. I mean, it's literally a few hundred yards away. You have a business there. It will increase the traffic, which will increase the amount of toxic fluids that would run off into the river. This will not only affect the wildlife, but also the drinking wells for many folks who live along the river, like I do. The river is literally in my backyard. And not just for their families, but the livestock, but those farmers that are all up and down those roads. In closing, I'd like just to say that you know, if this goes through, there will be nothing to stop other swaths of land along Skipper Bridge to become a landscape of cookie-cutter homes just like Valdell. And, and it ends up forcing those families that live out there that have been in this area for generations or those of us that are new like I am, that we're going to have an uphill battle against developers and investors who will strip the land for profit, again, like they did on Valdell. It's an eyesore. You know, it's once we leave, you know, let the genie out of the bottle, there's no going back. I'm not a farmer, but I chose to raise my daughters here amongst the pines and the peacefulness of the Wicklacoochee River so that they may learn to appreciate the beauty of rural living and their responsibility to preserve it. I would just like to end with this quote from Franklin Roosevelt, a nation that destroys its soils destroys itself. Forests are the lungs of our land, purifying the air and giving fresh strength to our people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think on the sheet it's supposed to be Samuel for the Heath Boston. So I'm actually the adjoining property owner uh, at 6295 Super British Road. So I will not repeat a lot of what these ladies have mentioned. Uh, there again, it did say that I have multiple different, I have about eight different options of dollar stores, convenience stores, and things right around me. I am more than happy to walk to those stores eight miles versus walking out my path. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me remind you, Bill neglected to mention to you that all these folks behind me that are opposing this, we all have close to a half a million dollars invested into our opponents there. Mm -hmm. These folks don't. Some regional gentlemen drove by and said, hey, we could do that. And Bill mentioned as well, hey, they could do that. There's a lot of things I have the right to go out and do. It doesn't mean I should do it. It's very evident. This is wrong for our community. Uh, a couple of things, again, that's not being mentioned. Again, Skipper Bridge Road, most of the homes that are beyond me, that are on the map and beyond that, are all residential. There are no other commercial, uh, unless we do have a couple of horse farms in that area, obviously. But they don't bring the type of traffic that this one so again, the other, the other thing I would like to cite, this is not to get on anyone's bad side, but the, the, the staff's recommendation, they don't live in our neighborhood. So of course they're going to make a recommendation. They don't have a property, a property property invested in property out here. They don't live out here. The other thing is, this 10-day posting is an absolute joke. So I was on location. I am a leader of a financial institution and doing commercial lending. Over $40 million in my career throughout the Charlotte, Rock Hill area. Came down here about six years ago and doing it here as well. Never once has one of these been approved like this in a rural, homesteaded type area. So my property is not at all one it is. This is a farm. Again, highly opposed to this. The 10 day, again, I do want to make it very clear on that. The 10 day uh, announcement of this. Is an absolute joke, I and mean, it is an opportunity for them to slide something in. Yeah. Your staff alone said, hey, by the way, we've been talking about it for months. We didn't know that. So if there wasn't some sleight of hand going on, we would have all known about it. We would have some door knocking saying, hey, what are your opinions about this? And then we would be able to address that much sooner. Thank you, Mr. Vice.
it's going to back up traffic there. People are going to have a little action there. I can tell you that doing my job, that I hate to say I look it up, but after the few crashes, we've only had about two or three crashes a year there. That's the fatality. Um, that driveway there, those speeds that are out there, you need a breakdown lane, not just a turn lane. There is power lines there, there is a gas line there. Like you said, there is a roadway. They said to themselves, it's a rural area. We don't need that there. We know what the next fight's going to be with the other 112 acres. We know what's coming. Um, that will be the next battle to keep that out. I doubt we will. So please keep this out of here. We, we do not need another one. I want to come home to a nice peaceful area. I don't want to turn the corner and have to see lights, noise. They all start off nice and, and nice and cool. Um, and then they all, all come crumbling down. Everything deteriorates like it does. We'll have foot traffic from Cook County coming that way, getting a 12 pack of bush light. We don't need that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but we do not need this out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. speakers we've exhausted our time but I do want to give you an opportunity if the three of you have anything in addition to what has already been said if not we'll note you for the record that you are speaking against but I do want to give you an opportunity if you have anything different other than what's already been offered if you will please make sure that Miss Molly has your name for the record so that we can record that you are speaking against Roxanne Newton. Okay. We live down on 5550 Skipper Bridge Road. We have a 250 acre farm. We raise sheep. I don't know if I believe the 5,000 part because I cross my sheep on one side of Skipper Bridge Road to the other several times. <coughs> and I don't have any problems with screeching cars. So um, my issue is with uh, once you once this thing becomes a commercial property. The rest of it is, there's precedent set for the, for the remaining 100 acres that's over there. Not only that, like they said, it's a rural area. A dollar general sign is like, uh, to me, and to most people, it's a big sign that this is a low rent area. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, our property's probably like a million dollars. This is, this is just tacky. It, it doesn't belong in this area. This is, if you want to put it in between, evenly between the two double generals that are already on Skipper Bridge, put it across on a heart, Ashley Paul's Thank you. Money to get up there and, and 
have this right down the road from us. Not that we're too good, but it's just not a commercial area. So please, I implore you, don't set up precedence with going commercial here. Um, I don't know where each of y'all live, but imagine a Dollar General right at the pool um, We're probably going to be happy either. Um, please don't set up precedence. We don't want this here. motion by Commissioner Willis to deny. Do I have a second on that? Motion to deny carries. <clears throat> Woo! Woo! Thank you. 